Department of Homeland Security has issued a stern letter to Texas uh, demanding access to land seized by the state in Eagle Pass along the U.S.-Mexico border. According to Breitbart, the DHS ordered Texas to seize blocking Border Patrol access in and around Shelby Park and to remove barriers by the end of today. Texas Democrat Sylvia Garcia spoke to CBS News this week as she tried to blame Governor Greg Abbott for an inaccurate report about what caused a migrant mom and her two children to drown in the Rio Grande. It's 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 just horrific that we're going through this. It's just a reckless disregard for human life and a reckless disregard for the rule of law because people have a right to present themselves at the border and ask for asylum. The DHS uh, deems uh, Texas's actions in Eagle Pass unconstitutional and disruptive to federal Border Patrol operations. The letter, citing a federal law, warns of potential criminal charges for impeding federal officers. Mike? If you are president, Biden will meet with congressional leaders today at the White House to address the stalled military aid request for Ukraine and Israel. As reported by the Washington Times Speaker Mike Johnson, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell will attend as efforts are made to resolve the deadlock over spending for Ukraine, Israel, and border security operations. House Republicans have criticized Joe Biden for neglecting border issues and expressed concerns about additional funding for Ukraine without a clear strategy to win the war against Russia. Meanwhile, some liberal lawmakers are cautious about aid for Israel in light of Palestinian civilian casualties in Gaza. Prominent pollster and political analyst Scott Rasmussen said Tuesday the 2024 Republican presidential nominating process is over. Following former President Donald Trump's decisive win on Monday in the Iowa caucuses, garnering 51 percent of the vote, Mr. Trump won the Iowa caucuses with the largest margin in GOP history, topping his opponents in 98 of 99 precincts. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis claimed second place with 21 percent of the vote, and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley came in third third with 19 percent. Next up for the GOP presidential hopefuls is the New Hampshire primary on Tuesday, January 23rd. According to Rasmussen, a big issue for voters in upcoming primaries is going to be protecting the southern border, which was a big campaign focus for Donald Trump in 2016. Vivek Ramaswamy ended his run for president in Iowa, but last night in New Hampshire, he stood strong alongside Donald Trump. We heard we the people last night, and that is why last evening, I met my friend here, we met in person, and I told him that I would endorse Donald J. Trump for President of the United States and do everything in my power to lead us to victory in this war. It is a 1776 moment right now. That's where we live right now. Vivek Ramaswamy standing right next to Donald Trump. Next stop, of course, New Hampshire next Tuesday. And moving on to our next story is Greg. Thank you, Mike. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul says Dr. Anthony Fauci ought to be in prison over testimony to Congress about the origins and mishandlings of the coronavirus pandemic. There's a little uh, of their give and take from two years ago. You responded to him that you would do it, and you immediately got an article yeah, in you, Wired, you, and you sent it back to him and said, hey, look, I've got him. I nailed him in Wired of all scientific publications. That's not publication. what went on. Paul has consistently accused Fauci of lying about controversial testing the U.S. funded at the Wuhan lab in China and the origins of COVID. The senator says even when directly presented with evidence such as his own emails that contradict his statements to Congress, Fauci has continued to be dishonest. Paul said Monday Fauci's actions during and after the pandemic will one day be viewed as, quote, probably one of the most egregious and infamous public health decisions of our lifetime. Former White House Chief of Staff under Trump, Mick Mulvaney, was initially overseeing the White House response. Anthony Fauci was lying to the President of the United States. Period. End of story. I was running the, COVID, uh, the coronavirus task force before Mike Pence took over, and Tony Fauci lied to the President of the United States, told me to go on television and tell people not to wear masks. I did that, okay? Later on, he said it was to protect the short, a shortage of supply in the masks. He never told me that. He never told the President of the United States that. Paul says what Dr. Fauci has done is a felony punishable by up to five years behind bars. Right now, let's talk with constitutional attorney, Victory News contributor Chris Ann Hall. Welcome to Victory News. 
Thank you so much, Greg. It, it's always a pleasure for me to be here. Well, thank you. Rand Paul has pursued Anthony Fauci to tell the truth about COVID for years now. Now listen to pediatric cardiologist Dr. Kirk Milhone continue to strip back the deceptions. Here it is. The lowest risk for getting COVID is if you've had zero vaccines. As you add vaccines, your risk to get COVID goes up. I've never seen a vaccine like this. That's not the basis of vaccines. They shouldn't have what we would call negative efficacy. The doctor was citing a Cleveland Clinic study, so a government head who lied extensively about the virus and a vaccine with dangerous side effects that actually increased the chance of people getting COVID. So should Fauci see jail time and should Americans be filing lawsuits against those who mandated and manufactured this vaccine? Absolutely 100%. Fauci is not got, is not protected by any kind of immunity, and we should see attorneys general, we should see governors filing criminal charges against Fauci for the fraudulent information they relied upon, and we should see individuals themselves filing individual civil lawsuits against Fauci and his fraudulent comments. All right, let's go to David Weiss and his uh, Department of Justice legal team. They have requested requested the judge not dismiss gun charges against Hunter Biden after it's been revealed that the FBI found cocaine residue on his gun pouch. Hunter wants them dropped. Your thoughts on this matter, counselor? Well, America's built on the principles of due process and equal application under the law. Hunter Biden should be prosecuted to the same extent that thousands of others who are living under the same criminal circumstances are prosecuted every single year by the federal government. Anything less would be a travesty. All right, last week, Biden officials accused Texas of preventing the feds from saving three drowning migrants. The government just admitted in court that Texas was only informed a full hour after they already died. The Biden DHS is demanding Texas return control of the disputed area by the end of today, claiming the state's control is violating the U.S. Constitution. All right, you're a constitutional expert. Who's on the right side of this, Chris Ann? Texas is on the right side of this, absolutely, 100 percent. It's what we've been talking about here on Victory for years now. The U.S. Constitution does not deny the states the right to defend their borders, and the Texas Constitution, in Article 4 of the Texas Constitution, tells us that Governor Abbott is the commander-in-chief of the military forces of the state of Texas and has a duty to protect the state from invasion. And when the federal government is not doing its job, the government can't stop Texas from doing theirs. Hey, let's stay with the government. Let's stay with the Constitution. I want you to comment on the issue of big government overreach with America's fishermen through agency mm -hmm. regulations. That, that's before the Supreme Court today. It's Chevron case. Your thought? Well, the Chevron case is, is an old precedent that was established in the 80s that really expanded the power unconstitutionally of regulatory agencies, allowing them to define their own terms and operate under their own invented guidelines. In last year, the Supreme Court took a big bit of that power away from them. And now this case with the fishermen could bring the end of the Chevron doctrine. And we know that Clarence Thomas and Neil Gorsuch are both looking forward to seeing that end. All right, Chris Ann, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Steve. On Tuesday night's Flashpoint with Gene Bailey, the panel reacted to MSNBC's Joy Reid's vilification of white evangelicals in the wake of Donald Trump's historic win in Iowa. Noted scholar Dr. Carol Swain kicked off the discussion with a bit of humor. This is a hyper evangelical st white state. They see themselves as the rightful inheritors of this country, and Trump has promised to give it yeah. back to them. All the things that we think about, about electability, about, you know, what are people gaming out, or mm -hmm. none of that matters when you believe that God has given you this country, that it is yours, and that everyone who is not a white conservative Christian is a, fr is a fraudulent American. Do you really believe that th where there's such a big chunk of America that really buys into this, this narrative? 
I doubt it, but I have to tell you that I'm distracted by her wig. Like, if she dislikes white people so much, why is she wearing a blonde wig? So, I mean, I'm just distracted because there's a, a disconnect between her rhetoric and how she looks. And Joy yeah, Reid right. will racialize any and every topic. There's not a topic that she won't right. racialize because that's her role on that show. And I don't know whether she genuinely believes what she says or she's playing a character. They must vilify right. and harass and shame and persecute the evangelicals to suppress their turnout so that they don't show up in force. So they will be attacked like we have. We will never, never see a period like we are now. To watch the full episode, which I'm sure you will, go to GoVictory.com/flashpoint.